Hello and welcome to this presentation about mathematical physics at Maynooth University. I'm going to concentrate in this presentation on uh, mathematical physics as part of the general science program. We call it the Omnibus Science Program, MH201, and I'll explain how it fits into that, what the structure of the, the program is, the sort of things that you'll study, and perhaps some of the things that you might consider doing in, as a career with a degree that includes a mathematical physics component. Now, when I'm giving this talk to a live audience, I usually start by asking everyone if they can name a famous physicist. And remember, the audience uh, for a typical open day would, would include both prospective students and parents. So it's quite interesting the response that you get from people who are not necessarily working in physics or knowledgeable about physics. The names that come up are often Einstein, Albert Einstein, Stephen Hawking, Sir Isaac Newton. Other names might be Maxwell, Dirac, Schrodinger, and so on. The interesting thing about that is that nearly all of the names that come up, there are exceptions, but nearly all of the names, including all of the ones that I've just said, are actually theoretical physicists, not experimental physicists. And that just goes to show that actually what you what people understand by physics in the in the, in the public, in the general public, is largely the uh, the theoretical work which I'm going to describe. The people who are famous are generally the theor theoretical physicists. Well, I can't promise that you'll become famous, but I hope that um, you'll at least learn some interesting things uh, in, a, in a degree on uh, mathematical physics or theoretical physics. One of the names that you might have uh, thought of when I asked you to name a famous physicist is this person. If you didn't name him and you don't know who it is, this is Peter Higgs, he, the, the person who um, thought of the idea of the Higgs boson, a particle that was discovered at the Large Hadron Collider in CERN a few years ago, and uh, Peter Higgs won the Nobel Prize for, for that. You see that Peter is actually a friend of the department, you can see him. Uh, he was actually giving a lecture here when this photograph was taken a few years ago. And particle physics, which is his subject, is one of the things that comes under the remit of theoretical physics. And you'll study that as part of theoretical and mathematical physics. Now, let me just, uh, before going on, just mention that uh, we use the words mathematical and theoretical physics almost interchangeably here. Um, actually, the name of the course that you take, the lectures uh, at Maynooth, uh, is mathematical physics. So uh, the, the uh, courses, the modules that you take all begin with MP for mathematical physics. But basically, theoretical physics Theoretical physics and mathematical physics, we, we interpret as being roughly the same thing. So don't get too worried about whether it's mathematical or theoretical that we talk about. So what is theoretical physics? Uh, well, it's not experimental physics. There's another department that does experimental physics. It, we don't have laboratory work uh, in theoretical physics. Um, the first year of um, mathematical physics in the general science programme as a content which is not that far removed from leaving certificate applied maths. But very few of our students have actually done applied maths at leaving certificate, and you're not required to do it to, uh, to have done that in order to do the first year mathematical physics program. It just, I just mentioned it because it gives you some idea of the content. Now to compare what we do with what experimental physics do uh, is basically experimentalists design equipment they carry out experiments, they make measure, measurements, and by doing that, they, they find out patterns uh, and regularities in the behavior of physical systems on different kinds of scales. So they find out basically how the world uh, behaves under various conditions. Our job as theorists is, is not to find out how it, how it works, but why it works the way it does. So we try to explain all the patterns and, and regularities in the results obtained by experiment and observation in terms of underlying mathematical laws. So we have to know mathematics in order to do that. So mathematics and physics go hand in hand. 
Um, other things we do are also uh, to make predictions if the laws, if we understand the laws, what would happen in such a, situ a situation. And then we can make predictions that future experiments uh, might be able to uh, either verify or falsify, depending on whether we're right or wrong. And another fun thing you can do as a mathematical physicist is to think about what the universe might be like uh, if the laws of physics were slightly different. So if gravity was slightly different from what we believe it is and so on. Uh, that's a fun thing to do, and those speculations are often very interesting. So on the right-hand side of this slide, I've listed a few of the topics that you could do as part of a mathematical physics uh, curriculum. Uh, it includes quantum physics, quantum technology, quantum computing. These are all very hot topics these days. Particle physics, I've mentioned before. Uh, gravitation and cosmology, that's my own research area, the large-scale structure of the universe. Um, so with particle physics and gravitation and cosmology, you're talking about the physics of the very, very small on the one hand and the physics of the very, very large on the other. But we also do everything in between. So Earth's Earth scale physics, geophysics, met meteorology, uh, climate modeling, but also uh, things of a more applied nature like uh, financial modeling, uh, solid state physics and all kinds of other things. So you name it you can apply theoretical physics techniques to it. I've just randomly picked a slide from our first year mathematical physics, um, first semester, first year mathematical physics notes, just to show you the kind of things we start off. This is a classic problem that we learn about in Newtonian mechanics, which is a, um, a block of a certain mass sliding out down a slope uh, with friction applied and uh, basically, this is an interesting application of Newtonian mechanics, but also uh, allows us to develop some ideas about how to use mathematical objects known as vectors. That's one of the things that would be the first uh, steps you take on a course in mathematical physics. But of course, it goes from Newtonian mechanics to quantum mechanics to relativity to general relativity and so on and so on. So those are just the first steps. Um, but it's the, the interesting and fun exercises that we can do with basic mechanics in order to find our feet as mathematical physicists. Now, what could you do with a degree in mathematical physics or even just a, a science degree with a, with a mathematical physics component in it? Well, our specialists in mathematical physics, phys physics often uh, go on to do further study. They find it interesting, but also um, they want to learn more. So uh, about 40%, over 40% of our graduates go on to do a master's or uh, also a uh, possibly a PhD, um, or possibly both of those. And down the left here, I've basically um, just listed um, a few of the other options that you would have as a mathematical physicist. The point is not that you study mathematical physics so much, although that's interesting in itself, but in doing that, you learn a lot of mathematical skills, you learn computational modeling skills, you learn all kinds of problem solving techniques. And those are not only applied to physics, they are applied in all kinds of different sectors. So your problem, if you have one with a degree in mathematical physics is deciding which area to apply it to. It's very different from, say, engineering. With an engineering degree, you're basically going to move in the direction of doing some kind of engineering dif uh, discipline. But uh, with mathematical physics, the number of doors that are open is very, very many. And uh, the difficulty is sometimes choosing which, which door to go through. So here are just a few of the um, things that we do. I've, it's a... General science program is a four-year degree, so that I've basically put a few of the topics that are involved in each of the four, four years. In the first year, we do Newtonian mechanics, like I've just described. Also a little bit of relativity and a little bit of also, um, uh, uh, a little bit of atomic and quantum physics in the first year as well. So it's basically a very simple grounding. I'll explain how that fits into the general science program later on. In the second year, we develop a little bit more. You learn more about thermodynamics, electricity and magnetism, a bit more 
about other subjects, uh, vibrations and waves and, and some more mathematical techniques. Third year, again, it develops a few more. I've just picked out quantum mechanics. And in the third year, we also teach uh, com computational physics using Python, which is the sort of industry standard programming language there. And that's actually a very useful thing to have on your CV when you're applying for a job. The choice of material gets wider and wider as you go through the four years of a program. And uh, I've just done in the green on the right here, just, just listed some of the options um, that you would have in the fourth year. And uh, basically you can follow whichever is your interests. Uh, astrophysics and cosmology happens to be my research area. Um, but we also do particle physics, quantum information theory, general relativity, fluid dynamics. That's just a few of the options. So there's lots and lots of choice in the final year if you take mathematical physics all the way through to the final year. So let's have a look at how mathematical physics might fit into um, the general science program. Now, you probably know this, but I'll repeat it just um, for, uh, for completeness, that in the first year of this program, you do four subjects. So one of which has to be mathematics. So it's pretty natural for us to do mathematical physics and mathematics together because they complement each other. Mathematical physics in the first year is pretty much like applied mathematics. And the mathematics in the first year is pretty much like pure mathematics. So they go together very well. You also pick another two subjects. Uh, very often uh, people do experimental physics as well because that they complement each other, mathematical and experimental physics. And then uh, other options, it's up to you, but you could do computer science, for example, as a fourth subject or whatever you feel like. Now, in the second year, uh, that four subjects gets narrowed down to three. So you do mathematic. If you want to carry on into the final year with mathematical physics, you do that with two other subjects. Again, it could be experimental physics or whatever in the, in the second year. In the third year, you go down to two subjects. So you'll be typically doing mathematical physics with something else, perhaps experimental physics, perhaps not. And then in the final year, you can, if you're doing the joint honors route, you can do mathematical physics with your the same subject that you did in the in the set in the third year, and you'll get a degree with two names in the title, two top subjects. But that's not the only way to do it. Actually, go for a single honors program, which is very popular among students who really like mathematical physics, and then they basically follow the same route till the, till the fourth year. And instead of doing two subjects in the fourth year, you just do all mathematical physics. And that means that you can do all of the uh, options that I talked about um, written in green on the, on the previous slide a couple of slides ago. The final uh, year single honors mathematical physics has the advantage that you can actually do a research project as part of that as well. And that's a thing that really gets people interested in going on to do uh, research afterwards. So here are just a few uh, numbers about um, MH201. Mathematical physics is the name of the, of the course that you take. The modules are all called mathematical physics something or other. Um, it's a four-year course. You get a BSc um, and it could be either uh, fully theoretical physics or it could be theoretical physics and one other subject, theoretical and experimental physics, for example. Um, I've put here the CEO points from last year. CEO is a bit different this year, so it's not really um, a, a strict guide, but um, three, around about 350 points is what you need to get in and you need to have done uh, maths, as it says on the slide, and at least one other science subject. But you don't need to have done physics and you certainly don't need to have done applied mathematics. OK. Now, those are not the only ways uh, that you can include uh, mathematical physics in your degree. Some students will actually take it only for part of their degree. They might take it in the first and second year, but then not take it on any further. But that's a really useful thing to do anyway. So um, to have that, uh, the skills that you get. Uh, with, with even just a few modules in mathematical physics are really important. So in the other denominated programs like biotechnology, physics with astrophysics, many of the students do take uh, mathematical physics as well. And in fact, in some 
subjects like um, the BSc in mathematics with education. It's a compulsory subject at the start. And it's a, so a, a, you can either go for a whole mathematical physics degree in the final year, single honours. You can go 50-50 joint honours, or you can just include it uh, alongside other subjects. You specialise in chemistry or something like that, or you can use it in as part of many of these other programmes. You can even study mathematical physics at Maynooth through our general arts programme, MH101. And uh, that means that you get a BA degree rather than a BSc. Uh, but it, that flexibility allows you to combine uh, mathematical physics with a subject in the arts domain um, rather than the sciences. So um, you might combine mathematical physics with music, say, or something else like that. The structure of this uh, degree is actually rather similar to general science, except that it's three years rather than uh, four. You do four subjects in your first year, and then you go straight down to two subjects in the second year. And then in the third year, you can do either two subjects, as it's shown on this slide, which would give you a double major. Or uh, you can take a majority of your modules in one of the subjects and fewer modules in the other. So in the second year, you then go to a major minor split, which is roughly two thirds, one third. And then you get a BA degree in your major subject uh, with a minor alongside, in this case, a major in mathematical physics and um, some other subject from the arts programme as your minor. So that's it for mathematical physics. I hope that's uh, all clear, but if it's not, then please feel free to contact me either through the forum or at any time you like uh, through email.